what's going to happen? Are you going to get any closer to dropping another 50 fucking pounds? So your mom's sick. So what does that have to do with anything? Wouldn't that make you want to work harder? Yeah. Right? Wouldn't, couldn't you go to the gym with like just a little more intensity within you, right? You're fighting a little more demons or they're dragons or some shit like that. But it's like a lot of us, not, you know, a lot of people want to just that comfort and it's instilled in us. So you have to, you got to know the brain to be able to advance. I believe you have to be aware because if you're not, you will always fall victim of your own inner bitch or your own inner dragons, inner demons. And it's about that effort. All right, guys, what's up? It's Kyle with another episode of Unlocking Your Instagram. We got Jake from New Orleans. Jake, we had a good workout, man. Thanks for coming up for this. It's good to be here, man. That was a heck of a workout. Thanks for the programming on yeah. the PK. Wow. Yeah, we got PK from Chicago, longtime friend. So it just kind of happened he was coming in, and I said, let's do it together, man. You know, three, three, uh, three free-thinking people. Good day to be live. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, man, we got after it. BK put us through a workout. What did you think of the workout? Uh, I love it, long eccentrics like that. So having to really get down in the hole in the squat and come back up with big drive is not only what I like, but it's what I needed. And it's also what I had up in the rotation. So it worked out pretty well for me. Worked out? Yeah. You, explain for the people listening what we did for the workout. Well, it usually happens that way. If you notice that, that you, you conceptualize something, then all of a sudden it circles around one way or the other. Like, how how is Perfect. that even possible, man? I was just about to do something like that. Uh, we put together a uh, an eccentric load, so um, just controlling the, the force on the way down and making sure you go up faster than you come down. It's more of, you know, uh, speed, quality, precision movements, but it's also uh, time under tension. So you got to – it's a lot of bracing, and I love bracing because fuck sit-ups – when you can just learn how to brace, right? Yeah. So that's what we did, and then we started off with some uh, nice solid activation movements, just get us all sweaty. I don't never want to hit the uh, the main part of the movement. That's our dessert, right? The squats, clanging and banging. That's easy shit, right? So I want to go in there sweaty. I want to go in there move moving, and uh, that's what we did. Yeah, that's exactly what we did, man. It was good. Thank you. It was good. So Jake, wh- why don't you tell everybody what you were doing up in the area? Yeah. So. Uh, I was here a year ago, this exact time, and um, for this year came up for what's called the NYC Seal Swim. So a good friend of mine, Bill Brown, he's actually the only man that David Goggins has ever called tough also, just kind of give Bill a plug right there. Uh, he has been putting on what's called the NYC Seal Swim for the last five years. I've swam it within the last three. Start off in Liberty State Park in New Jersey, swim three quarters of a mile in the Hudson River. So most people hear that and they go, what the fuck, <laughs> you swim in the Hudson River? Three quarters of a mile from Liberty State Park around the Statue of Liberty, another three quarters of a mile to Ellis Island, and then a mile and a half to South Marina Cove in Manhattan. Nice. Why do that? Well, it's to commemorate a lot of fallen members, particularly from what's called Extortion 17, which was a rescue mission uh, where a lot of SEALs died, Navy SEALs uh, died, uh, 17 of them in total, which was one of the largest kind of losses of life of American special uh, warfare operators ever in one go. When was that? Did they uh, I believe it was in 2011. Yeah, I remember o- that. Octo- it was either October or 2010 or 11. If I'm they were in a mistaken. helicopter? Or no? Correct. Yeah, I remember yeah. that. Yeah. So it was a big deal. You know, um, those guys are not a dime a dozen, and there are very few and far between. So when a big group of them of that size goes down, it's, it, you know, it moves the needle. So how do you commemorate something like that? And then other people, you know, from 9-11, those guys were there in response to September 11th. So putting it together for not just the SEALs that went down, other armed service members that have fought and died, the emergency service workers that were there the day and otherwise since then, how do we commemorate them in something that's kind of SEAL-esque, right? So I myself am not a SEAL, but I am a Marine. We share a love for the water right? Like doing hard things. Like how do we do something that's, you know, maybe something really tougher than not to dis uh, or downgrade a 5k, but like what could really honor them in a way that would make us feel good. And that's what Bill said the first time. And that's what we do every year. So we knock the legs of the swim out and you do 22 pull-ups and hundred push-ups between each one of those legs. The 22 pull-ups is to kind of honor the 22 veterans a day taking their lives due to suicide. So it's raising that veteran suicide awareness for everybody. And then the 
100 push-ups in honor. Again, just to kind of get some good blood pumping in because we love doing <laughs> push-ups, so why not? But every year, uh, usually first or second week of August, NYC SEAL swimming, that's what I came up for. How long did that take you? I was in the water this year for 97 minutes. Okay. 97.13, I think is what I clocked it at. Uh, and what did they close the... Uh yeah. It's incredible uh, the logistics that go in line with that. I, I was telling the boys uh, when they would come out for this, I was like, you know, the marathon in New York is a huge event, right? There's, I don't know how many thousands or tens of thousands of runners, but it's big, right? And then all the NYPD, the FDNY, there's local, there's federal stuff out there, all the news, either on the ground, in the air, right? It's a huge logistical thing. We only have this year 260 swimmers in the water. It's still a big group. Last year, we only had like 185. But to think for 260 guys, we had, you know, New Jersey State Police, New Jersey Local Police, New Jersey Port Authority, all the same for New York, Coast Guard, several helicopters in the air. It's a massive amount of logistics because it's in the water, right? It's not like saying like, okay, everybody's here. Perfect. Let's go. And we keep running like on pavement. But in the water, it's like one, two, three, like every time between the intervals and before the intervals would start, it's like a physical touch the man next to you, head count to make sure everybody's there and uh, safe and accounted for. But it's a, a huge project with a lot of moving parts. That's cool, man. Yeah, it's a trip. And rarely do you see the same way, in the same way that the guys in Extortion 17 went down, rarely do you see this group of that size, of this caliber of people together. It's not their thing to do that, right? They would only come together in that size in order to go after something. R otherwise, they're... You know, the, for the most part, loners. A lot of the people are rogue individuals themselves, whether they're just kind of shadow-esque guys that are still in service or they've kind of gone their own way since they've become civilians because it's just kind of the nature of the person, right? Sure. They're all spiritual walkers and they're on their own journeys. So you don't really see them come together like that except to assault something, usually in theater. So to do it in this way, it's kind of, an, again, that symbolism of like, hey, we're attacking an objective. And the guys were even like, yesterday, they're like, dude, y'all look like you were fucking storming the statue, <laughs> like a bunch of guys going to war, you know, like all the swimmers in the in the column in the water. I was like, I guess I never saw it like that because I never see it, you know, I'm down yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. And he's like, dude, they were like, it's crazy to watch that because it looks like a bunch of people assaulting like an objective or something. That's cool, like, man. Cool. Did yeah. you train for that? Yeah, uh, I swim pretty regularly. And um, I've just always liked liked the water and the training is fun for it. You know, it's, it's good to be in the water. I mean, like to me, getting in there is, uh, is a great thing, not just for my body, but for sure my mind, right? And the training that I do for it, I try to get some kind of, you know, cold water in there too, especially like when I know the guys are up here doing it and training in February and getting the, the Hudson when it's still got icebergs. I don't have that, you know, at the time I was in Miami. So like the water's 80 degrees, it's not that bad. But, uh, yeah, a little bit of training. I could have trained more always, but, yeah, it worked out pretty well. Good, good. Yeah. What about you, BK? Tell us why you came up, man. Tell us th the journey at this point. Uh, I came up to uh, to Jersey to set up the juice. The new uh, Dragon Juice just came out. We uh, had to rebrand uh, logistically, um, new old strength, you know, reorder, and we were making sure that these gyms are getting uh, nurtured. And that's what we're doing now is we're making sure this Dragon Juice is getting in the hands of the right people. Um, we don't want to really go into GNC, into all these uh, big corporate places because we don't think it'll get the value that it has. Um, so we're going after the gym owners that can raise their revenue because we speak their language. So I'm just in between um, taste testing a new blueberry lemonade. That's my manufacturer's out in Miami, uh, coincidentally. So I'll be flying out of there, uh, out of here tomorrow, going to Miami. Hopefully uh, getting it approved and uh, back on my way to Chicago to make this happen. Quick trip then. Yeah, in and out, man. That's what we do, create opportunities. Yeah, yeah, hustle. Yeah. Talk about the, um, the mindset, you know, to get to this point where you've had this vision, you know, and seeing, seeing this baby kind of come to birth. Well, I, I believe that there was always something out there for people that do that fast. You know, um, anybody that's in the fasting community knows that minerals are our bread and butter. That's what we... That's what the mind really adapts to um, for caloric consumption instead of caloric consumption. So my idea was to put together the juice, the original juice that's been around for decades, and uh, make it taste good. And it's been a you know it's been a struggle. You know it's a lot of um, prototypes coming out, but um, there is 
room in this market for that. And once you start tasting it, once you start doing it, you know that the minerals is what allows you to perform at high levels. It's also, we know, a lot of you guys know them as electrolytes, electrolytes, but we know them as uh, neuron transmitters. So we really want to affect the gut on that because neuron transmitters, as much as you think they come from a brain, they actually come from a stomach. So by not eating, by not consuming, you're allowing your um, your stomach, your your digestive system, they're called digestive enzymes, to do way more than just digest. So that's what that is. And I thought of a product, and we, we put it into action, and, uh, you know, you have to go all in if you want to do it. So I went all in, and here we are. Here we are, man. So the mindset <laughs> is is just uh, pursuing curiosity. I've Actually, that's all I do all, all the time. I pursue curiosity and uh, see where it takes me. Yeah. Yeah. Stay curious all the time. Yeah. And what about you, Jake? <laughs> where, you, where are you at these days? I mean, you've got an interesting journey yourself. The curiosity, for sure. I mean, that's the word I tell everybody is going to be carved into my headstone somewhere. You know, curious. like if you had one word that could keep you straight in life or on the right path or maybe on the wrong path, I don't know, but the path you should be on regardless is curious. You know, yeah. asking why instead of telling why, listening more than speaking, observing more than, you know, directing, et cetera, et cetera. But I am where I am because of curiosity, because of humility. Right now I'm in Kerrville, Texas. If anybody's listening, that's the home of Johnny Football, Johnny Menzo. Oh, yeah? Yeah. I just learned that because I watched his documentary. Was it good? <laughs> yeah, it's really good. I want to watch and, it. And uh, he was very misunderstood, sadly. So if the truth is there in the documentary, it's definitely worth watching. But... um. I'm actually back in school now, of all things. Yeah, uh, about to be 40 years old, and I'm an undergrad uh, in a pilot school in aviation studies. So I always wanted to fly. I always wanted to be a pilot and found an opportunity at a local university there in Kerrville, Shriner University, an awesome prep school. It's been around for about 100 years now. But to be able to have the curiosity of what if, of maybe the humility to be able to walk in and say, I'm – 40 years old and there's going to be a bunch of 20 year olds and kids and other people that are going to look at me differently and be like, are you calling me, sir, you know, it's, I'm like, please don't do that. You know, <laughs> but, um, I wouldn't be there if I didn't have an open mind to it. I wouldn't be there if I didn't have the belief that I could do it. I wouldn't be there if I didn't still have the dream of wanting to do that. Right. And I wouldn't have the mindset to be there if I hadn't cleaned myself up or began cleaning myself up quite some time ago and earned the right to be there, the feeling to be there, knowing that, 10 years ago, I wouldn't have been fit for it mentally or emotionally. The, my stability was all over the place. Who I was then wouldn't have had an iota of chance to do this. But now it's like, yeah, like I can do this. I want to do this. I feel that I'm living in a manner that is congruent with the dream. For you sure. Know, like I am walking that walk. It's like when you go for the pro card in bodybuilding. Sure. You know, like I was a pro before I was a pro. Yeah. You don't need the, the dignifying authority to tell you, like, hey, you made it. It's like you act like the pro now, right? And to kind of talk about that, I was only a pro for a day. One day. You know, I want to show it was actually up here in Somerville, oh, <laughs> New yeah. Jersey, of yeah. all places. Right down, yeah, it's very close. Yeah, and uh, won the show, won the, won the pro card. It was awesome. And then the next day I got a call from the Federation saying, yeah, there was a technicality with one of the competitors, da-da-da-da. So his um, – placement was is nullified thus we didn't have enough competitors for the competition so we're gonna have to void your uh, professional rating and i was like you got to be fucking kidding you know like i lost my shit right like how hard I, i've worked so hard blah, blah 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 like ego ego me 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 right so if i'm you know gonna one day write a book about being a pro for a day yeah why not? you know but did that change anything no did that change who I was before? No. Did it change who I am now or how I carry myself or do anything else? No. So now, still coaching full-time, being a student full-time, so pursuing one dream, living another, and still acting like a pro, or at least trying to. It's great. It's great, man. I think it's lost on a lot of people when you could say, <clears throat> what's the difference? You know, people don't understand that statement. Yeah. Well, you start thinking about all the shit that can go wrong or how people are going to judge you, right? It's it's just instinctual. When I first launched the Dragon Juice, I had no clue it would do how it's doing now. Like, it just took off. It, now you have to strategize how you could get to that next level, right? Because anybody can shoot a, a dart and fucking hit a bullseye once, right? 
but can you continue to do that over and over again? And that's what happens when you got that disqualification or that whatever, that mishap, right? It's how you responded. It's like you said, nothing really happened, but it did. It yeah. created some sort of character change, right? Because now your perception is completely different yeah. than what it was. It was, you say, you got a hangman on there. This dude's got a, a guy that's being hung by his neck on his thigh, and it says ego. <laughs> and, and that's what it is, right? Yeah. And, but it's all those little character, it's self-development, and you, you create this character where you know that shit's going to happen again. You know, I, I mean, I just had a thousand units just get lost. Mm. You know, you're talking about a large lump of sum that's just, it's out there floating around. And it's how I respond to this then rather than react. Because if I react on it, well, what about my money? What, man, I can control what I can fucking control. That's why I'm out here training opportunities. You guys just happen to just, it's like the next day, put a big ass order in again. I already sold out of the Dragon Juice. Give me some more. So what do we do? We go and have a rucksack with our former mentor, my former mentor, your same mentor. Then all of a sudden I get hooked up with Jake. It's like, no, 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 that's what happens. You yeah. create this character, you respond rather than react, and then all of a sudden you pursue that curiosity. It's like, no, nah, I got this shit, man. This is what the world's about. I'm my own narrator. Yeah, yeah, it's great, man. And we have a guy at uh, one of our gyms who's been with us on and off for almost a decade very heavy you know he started over 400 got below 300 you know fasting COVID hit but the other morning he's been texting me and he comes for saturday morning workouts which is open to anybody and he's always got you know it's that type of mindset well i can't control all the stuff that happens to me like what do you, my mom is sick blah 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 he goes what would you do if your mom was sick i said the same exact thing i'm doing right now i said you can't that's the only thing you can control is your attitude your mindset you know it's a stoic principle but I think a lot of people don't want to accept that, right? Because then it means they actually have to do the work or do whatever. Is it the animal part of the brain that wants the comfort? Yeah, oh, yeah. You know, I think that stems, right? Yeah. As you're, we're coaches, right? Yeah. You're a coach. We're all coaches, right? So we get that a lot. Well, poor me, right? Poor, I got this going on. Do you want me to pat you on the ass, pat you on the shoulder? Is that what you're looking for? Because that's not, it's not reality, you know, if you continue to do that, if you accept that all the time, what's going to happen? Are you going to get any closer to dropping another 50 fucking pounds? So your mom's sick. So what does that have to do with anything? Wouldn't that make you want to work harder? Yeah. Right? Wouldn't, couldn't you go to the gym with like just a little more intensity within you, right? You're fighting a little more demons or they're dragons or some shit like that. But it's like a lot of us, not, you know, a lot of people want to just that comfort. And it's instilled in us. So you have to, you got to know the brain to be able to advance, I sure. believe. You have to be aware. Because if you're not, you will always fall victim of your own inner bitch or your own inner dragons, inner demons. And it's about that effort, right? It's like attitude and effort, right? Yeah. Those are the two things. Yeah. So if my mom got sick, God forbid, I mean, I saw my dad die. That's what led me to pursue anything and everything that I fucking want to pursue. You know, like there's two different mindsets out there. So how do you, how do you coach your people to to get into that state of mind without hurting their fucking feelings? Yeah, it's you hard. know, it's hard, man. You know, do you want to do you want the truth or do you want to fucking hug? Honestly, like, what do you want? You know, and then can you be compan? Can you have compassion and empathy at the same time? Like, I don't know. I try to say that to people about with empathy, saying that. Uh, I can't have sympathy for you because I have empathy. Yeah, that's good. Right? Meaning like, I'm not saying I've been exactly there, but I've been damn near close enough to where I can't, I can't have sympathy for you because I feel you. I understand. I have had that kind of adversity. I have had to come from less to get to more. I have been living right now, for example, you know, talking about mothers and, and family stuff um, since mid April helping my mother deal with a bunch of legal things and guiding her physically to certain places, helping her with medical bills and expenses and situations, living situations, taking her down to Mexico now, helping her find a new place to live in Texas. Me being almost 40 years old, having a fucking college dorm room. That's what's up. Right. A twin XL bed with my little chair, my little study, like wait till, you know, people are talking about, I don't know how you, you know, I can't do this. Da, da, da. I'm going to be like, look at me, motherfucker in my little prison cell. Yeah. Right. Don't tell me you can't like I love 
rather don't love. But the first thing, first order of business, only rule I'll ever have with anyone is don't ever tell me you can't. Tell me you won't do it. Yeah, big difference. Literally look me in the face and say, no, I'm not going to do that. Okay, I'll respect you more. But don't well, tell me. Do you, you want it though? Do they really That's want right. it? That's the thing. It's it, do you? It's hard to conceptualize that for, for for myself, and maybe I'm just fucked up. But if you say you want something, isn't it in the preparation that'll show me you want it? Not the words that come out of your mouth. I'm not trying to be cynical right now. I I, I, I am a positive person, but if we can get on that level of somehow being able to teach through a little more aggression. A little more, hey, like, you're your own worst fucking nightmare right now. You know, a lot of times people are their their worst. They can't get that next step in front of the other because they keep tripping over their other foot. They keep looking up at the top of the mountain instead yeah. of down at their feet like one step at a fucking time. Yeah. Right? Because you keep looking at the top of that mountain, it's it just gets further and further away. <laughs> you never get closer to the top. Right? You get more and more exhausted, then all of a sudden – what happens? Cortisol comes up. You start cramping up. You start sweating. Next thing you know, your mind's playing tricks on you. Yeah, black threshold. Right? It's just it's it's like a domino effect of negativity instead of awesomeness. And it's just it's just a different path. And it's like go right instead of left. Yeah, and it's a different path just based on the mind. I mean, you coach so many people. What is what's your philosophy when you coach these people? You know, when somebody's feeling sorry for themselves. It's what you focus on. Yeah. You can just shift your focus instantaneously and everything can change in Sp an instant. Spontaneous right action. Yeah, that's good, yeah. <laughs> that's all it is. It's true. If it light, flashlights over here, I always use that analogy, just shine it over here. And if you're not feeling the way you should, then just say, what am I focused on? It's so simple. I think, you know, for me, one of the hard things when I got clean the first time. Clean from what? Uh, hard drug use. Okay. Uh, for a, a long time, I, I loved cocaine okay. for years, for better part of 15 years, and uh, booze and women and reckless, you know, spending of money and anything that I could do to try to consume, so to speak, to kind of hide who I was and, and feel better about the world around me because I didn't like it. And um, the grip of drugs is is strong, but it always gave me a clear adversary. You know, it was always like a an identified, personified enemy. I always had for that. For sure, for sure. Any and any addiction. Yeah, any addiction, yeah. right? You're you're clearly okay. I mean, I got a gambling problem. I got but a you sex knew issue. It. You, know you know what it, it is, right? You know it's it clear. Is. It's clear. But once you kind of let's say best those demons, now you're back to like the challenge of free will, which I think is the hardest to beat. When you have the choice of saying fuck it to anything, meaning I can whine if I want to. I cannot commit if I want to. I can break my word if I want to. I don't have to be accountable if I don't want to. I think that's the hardest thing for all of us to deal with. So like talking about how do you flip the script, how do you sh and move the flash, it's because too many people, ourselves included, can just say, nah, I don't feel like doing it. Whereas rarely are you in a situation where their control is so strong that you don't have that option. You know, whether it's being in prison, the military, some other type of highly controlled environment where you cannot choose otherwise, right? The most important part of any experiment paying tribute to the scientific method is the control, right? If we do all three of us do a walk right now and I'm in high heels, you're barefoot and you're in combat boots and we're trying to go from here to there, like it's not really an accurate metric to see who got there the fastest or the most efficiently because we're, the control is fucked up, right? So like as long as the control is variable to an, or variance or the ability to say no, I think people live, you know, a very difficult, have a very difficult time in life right now because there's just too much choice. That's exactly it, man. <clears throat> and, you, and you're always just, if you were to go back, there's self justification of why you do so. There's always right? an out. There's, there's an out. It's, and it's that instant gratification, right? As long as opposed to delayed gratification. So you find that, that those inner dragons almost. I've been addicted once, and I think we're all addicted at, of something, and I think we're all sure. aware of there's addiction out there. And I think that's where that empathy co empathy comes in, right? Oh, yeah. It's like if you're always justifying why you should skip a workout or justifying why it's okay just to cheat 
one time or another time on whatever it's your diet or drug use, your relationship. I think that's what starts getting to you over and over again. And then the self-doubt comes in. And then all of a sudden you have no confidence in yourself and that self-belief, that faith, right? And faith is kind of the glue that holds us all together, you know? And so it's like, how can you do hard things, you know, yet you don't want to do, but end up that know that it's better for you in the long run, you know? And that's like some sort of discipline out there. Oh, yeah. Right? Wouldn't yep. that be some sort of discipline of discipline, yeah. doing the hard stuff? You know, you don't necessarily want to do a drop set of burpees, but you do it knowing that you're going to get to them squats. That's yeah. your dessert, right? Yeah. It's like earned. Yeah. How do you earn yourself through life? You know, and that's a good that's a good point. And then so you were addicted once, you made it through and then you went back. Oh, a few times. A few times, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. It took it took me several bang of the head into the concrete wall to make it stick. You know, where it's like New Orleans is one thing and you know, working in the oil field is great and having all that free time, but I had a lot of cash and means and no concern and other things and I just wasn't right and I wasn't happy in life. And that's a volatile place to be then. And uh, it wasn't until my brother came home from law school one day when he was studying. I was always fascinated by him learning things in law school. And I just thought it was cool. He's my little brother, and I'd love to hear him recite and recount like legislature. I was like, God, this is awesome. What a genius. Yeah. And he's like, hey, man, did you know in Louisiana it's a mandatory 10 years if you are in possession of a controlled dangerous substance, otherwise called a CDS, which was be cocaine, and a firearm. He's like, so it's a mandatory 10 years if you ever have those two things together. And I was like, fuck. Because I always had a gun on me in Louisiana, in New Orleans, always. And I always had bags on me. So, like, for years, years, you know, and other people could say, oh, whatever, it's not that bad. And I thought about it. I was like, holy shit. Meaning the minimum I would get. I was always drinking and driving. I was always under the influence of otherwise driving. So, like, minimum 10, add on, a, you know, under influence while driving, add on, maybe I hit somebody, there's some manslaughter, maybe I evade the police, add up, da, 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 like how fast does that become 20, 25 or worse? And I was like, fuck, dude. <laughs> Still, it wasn't enough to make me stop because I moved up to New York, I got rid of the vehicle and I didn't have my firearm. So I was like, oh, wow, this is great. Now, I'm Free. no more 10 year yeah. minimum, you know, kind of thing. And it took other things to like press that through, you know, people crying to you. Mm -hmm saying what you did because you don't remember the night before or like you've been up for four days with a bunch of guys and they're all naked and you're naked and it's like what am i doing for fucking drugs and like who am i these people don't care about me like we think we're solving the world's problems for three days at a time and like nobody remembers anybody the next day or anything from otherwise so i think it was a lot of emptiness and like just kind of hollow sense of feeling over and over and over and over and over and more and finally having to look and say like is this really what you want to do for the rest of your life or is there something that you still believe in that you hold more or give more credence to than this bullshit you're just throwing away i never stopped working out no matter what i always knew that if i could stay tan like in the sun and seem to be in somewhat physical shape i could hide who i was at the time because the first thing that goes is your skin cut is your pigment and your body for most people when they're really going down the bad hole with substance they get pale and they alcohol get as well usually yeah you know like you, there'll be some type of jaundice whether it's nails but were or you on alcohol were you yeah yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah drinking eight nights a week and and using you know um yeah too much right when you're spending you know a thousand bucks a week on blow um, of money you don't even have and having to take loans out to fucking cover credit card bills because you could max them out with, you know, Venmos and stuff like that for Coke. It's like it adds up fast and it catches, you know. So I just got tired of, of doing that and trying to hide over and over and over and over again. And I guess that's what made me a good actor because I acted for a long time and it just gets tiring to do that. And eventually I said, maybe I just kind of want to do it my way. And start being who I really was, you know, maybe born to be as opposed to the person I became. And it was a day at a time. And like you said, one day I just shined the flashlight in another direction. I was like, holy shit, there's a whole other world here, man. It, it doesn't cost you anything. All you got to do is pick it up and believe in it. And he, that's what you did. Right? Yeah. Like, and to this day, it's like when I had my kind of revelation of 
it's like coaching revelation of like what opportunity you have to do like when you felt called to do what you do when you feel when you felt the call to do what you do why you know like mine was i'd come out of a huge bender uh, i woke up in an elevator at my old condo the door was closing on me like mm, 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 you know like i was on the face uh, face down vomit everywhere i've been there for hours i don't know how long and like to think like how many people had walked past me <laughs> you know and not said anything or not cared or like oh there's jake again doing his thing it's like what the fuck and in that moment, I kind of saw this other version of myself and he was happy and, and wholesome and had friends and just a sense of purpose and individuality that he was proud of. But there was this moat between the two people, like a gauntlet. And I was like, oh, fuck, don't tell me that's what I got to do to get there. You know, like I, this is what I have to go through. This is I have to give up all that. I have to excise all that from my life and from deep within myself to get to that happiness. That's where it really lies. It's like, fuck, I don't want to do that. You know, but that person looked at me and said, dude, all you got to do is believe that you can do this and just stay healthy. And I don't mean like, you know, eating the right food and working up. It's like, but nourish your mind and your body with physical and spiritual nutrition and stop throwing it away on bullshit. Because none of this is going to help you. No one has ever gotten up on a podium and received an award. And, you know, I'm the MVP of the league or whatever. Yeah, I'd like to uh, thank uh, <clears throat> Blank Cigarette Company and Blank Alcohol Company. And, my yo, my Coke dealer from the Bronx, you're my man. Uh, yeah, we couldn't have done it without y'all. Right? Yeah. Never. I've never seen that. Maybe one day, but I, I doubt it. You know, I don't care if it's Fortune 5, Athlete, XYZ, whoever, you know, top sellers, you know, something. It's always in this order or variation of disorder, God or belief in some kind of power greater than themselves, a close family member, usually mom or dad, and then friends and, a comp and the fucking competition yeah. to drive you, yeah. right? And I've always idolized the athletes, the big ones, and every time I kept, I kept watching these things, I was like, man, nobody's, nobody's saying they, they, they love their Coke dealer, yeah. <laughs> you know, or any of that shit, and it just... Yeah, eventually. Well, some of them do. Some of them do, and I certainly yeah, did, did, right? <laughs> and yeah. I did too. And I had them on speed dial, but I don't know. Sometimes enough just becomes enough, and I just feel fortunate that I was able to, like, I don't know, in that, that kind of moment, feel the script and say, okay, I'm going to send the flashlight, like Kyle said, this way. It's like, okay, if I'm an addict or I'm an obsessive person, what, fine, I'm going to be the best fucking son that I can be. I'm going to be the best man that I can be. I'm going to be the fucking best athlete I can be. So that's when I started getting into competing. I was like, oh, become addicted to this, yeah. you know, in a sense that it's not an addiction because I'm more on the side of like not believing in addiction, but more in like its purpose and it's purposeful because rarely has anyone ever had a gun put to their head and said, do this line, sleep with this girl, make that bet. Are you an addict? Did things get you there to make you become addicted or the substances can be addictive or addicting? Yes, but like most people have choice still. Yeah, choice is always there. <clears throat> and if we circle back on that with a lot of our clients, they can utilize not to that intensity, but the same shit with food. 100%. I mean, food is a drug, yeah. right? And it's been the biggest. We've, we've been brainwashed since we were kids about, you know, what we need to eat. I mean, you know, the food pyramid and everything needs to be flipped upside down, but it's the whole concept. It's almost like um, when the student's ready, the coach will appear, yeah. right? But how many opportunities is somebody going to get before it's too late, you know, know, especially with your health, right? You just yeah. never know. And if Don't time know. is of the essence, I've dealt with a lot of addiction in my family, in mm -hmm. my immediate family, and it's tough. It 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 tears families apart. Yeah. Um, because you have to relate and you don't want to give in because you sometimes feel like you're inhibiting, yep. you know? And so there's like a, there's harmony dealing with addicts, you know, and some, and I'm sure you weren't down that road of stealing and things, but that's what happens. You know, you, you allow them in, they, you know, they could steal and, you know, uh, and then I, I stole. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it's, it's, it's one of those things where you almost have to conceptualize with them and the same psych. You know, yeah. no matter how much you tell them, I remember bringing somebody very close to me in my family to rehab like five different times. And I'd have to drive like three hours to get them there. And by the time they got there, 
it's his free choice. It's his choice. He can't get forced by me. And we fist fall. I mean, there w- it's it it tears people apart. But slowly, if you can introduce, I think the weight room and God usually. That's what I told him is like you got two choices, brother. Like it's either what I've seen, what what just through what I've seen within my neighborhood with my friends. You're either gonna die, like you're gonna find God, or you find the weight room. Like that's what I have seen in the past. And and guess what? You find God in the weight room. Yeah, yeah. You, say, yeah. <laughs> you, you know, yeah. So and. This, you know, this family member is day by day, yeah. just like they all are. And yeah. you got to know that you can't force it. Right. But I know if he's not there four days a week, I'll say something. You know, if I see him in the gym, uh, if, if, what's up, man? Like, and it's day by day. And now six months into it, he's got a good physique going. He's got a full time job. He's got his own apartment. Nice. You know, but you got to always remember it's day by day because there's that self justification somewhere right along the line. Right, that creeps with you because maybe you got to get rid of your friends. Maybe yeah. you got to get rid of, you know, your apartment. You got to kind of move directions, start on over, start over a little bit, clear the canvas, and then just start, you know, picking it apart. What's your fundamentals? What's your foundation? It doesn't have to be this hard, but you know, I've seen it. It's crazy, man. Yeah, it's it, and and I uh, give you a lot of credit not only for what you did, but to be able to explain it because a lot of people go through addiction. Yeah. Not just drugs. There's yeah. other. There's a lot of things, right? Oh, big time, big time. Now, what would you guys say? <clears throat> where you guys are at in your journey, Jake? You go first. Just a, a dose of inspiration for people. You know, people out there that don't feel like they can do. You know, they they can't achieve the dream. Mm-hmm. What would you, what piece of advice would you give them? I mean, I'm literally sitting. You know, in that I was doing homework this morning before I came here. <laughs> right for class literally like studying pilot knowledge i had my you know pilot handbook open and aeronautical information guide and stuff like that like learning about a cessna 172 like the first plane i'm gonna fly on wednesday so to ever be the student you know the learning never stops no matter the age no matter the experience like like today i came in here and it's like could i be the one leading what we were doing today sure could anybody else be yeah sure but it's like man to come in and observe, listen, and just take notes and to study everybody, to look at the floor, to look at the way the things are kept in here, to see how someone keeps their castle, right? How another king keeps his castle, how another person calls his shots. You know, it's like, it's just an opportunity for me to grow inside and add feathers to my cap, Yeah. right? So BK kind of said the word earlier, but God, curiosity, God damn, it'll save your life, it saved mine. And if you can keep it that way, like it'll it'll keep you in the right place. That's great, man. That's, That's what's great. up, man. And it, it was a great workout, man. We had yeah. we had an unbelievable team. Like I wouldn't want anybody. I mean, it was a great team going into it. You know, everybody was open minded. And yeah, it was solid, man. Don't yeah. forget these two from my Washington. Yeah, I'm I'm down. For sure. I got I got a, I got a, I got a pocket full of goodies to. You know. <laughs> nice. It's a, it's been a great connection. Let me tell you. Yeah. You know, I I got. I was um, drinking coffee outside of my strip mall, which my gym is on in, and I get a text, you want to go for a ruck? I just knew it was in New York or New Jersey. I just knew the opportunity was right there to go on a ruck with this person, with Kyle, with being able to set up shop here, the whole Miami thing. It was, and then we'd like, when I say curiosity, you say curiosity, it's like, man, it, it's the circle forms. You know, it's it doesn't have to get bigger necessarily, it just gets stronger. And if I were to say anything to people that were listening, I'd say there's a hundred percent return on self investment. Boom. And if if I was somebody that was struggling and I struggle every single day, so I'll speak on my behalf, is I'll read, I'll write, I'll articulate my thoughts, which will allow me to start believing in myself even more. The more faith I have, the more people, good people come into my life. And then we become one big solid resource. Yeah. And then for every state I travel, I have a solid resource that I can consider a brother. And usually we work out together. Yeah. And once we work out together, we're kind of bonded. So 100% return on self-investment would be my main uh, model for, I guess, for today. Great, man. Yeah. Great. And people can follow you, 
BK Undisputed. What about you, Kyle? What about me? What would you say to these people out there if you had a empty the cup? Empty like you're the saying, cup. curiosity, empty the cup and ask for guidance. I've been asking a lot, of God, a lot for guidance. You know, every time I, I try to go my own path, things don't go well. <laughs> it doesn't, man. It kind of goes, you get lost, you know. Do you feel like you're in a good spot right now? I do. Yeah, I do. I feel like I'm a beginner in many ways. Oh, yeah. You know? Oh, yeah. Like just trying to figure things out. You know, self-doubt creeps in just like everybody. But you trust yourself. I trust myself, yeah. Yeah, okay. I'm, usually, uh, I'm usually right on the money with stuff, but it's, like you said, the, uh, I think everybody has a self-doubt on some level. You know, so Devin helps me work through that a lot, my wife. You know, she'll kind of talk me through it and call me out, too, which yeah. is good. You know, so. Yeah, they they believe in us more than we believe in ourselves sometimes. Yeah, no doubt. Right? No doubt, yeah. Slap us on the ass, say, get the fucking work. What are you doing? <laughs> yeah. She was like, what you, she was telling me yesterday when you yeah. were out, you know, you went for the massage. She's like, you got to do, you're like, what are you waiting for? I'm like, I'm moving, you know, but it's good to have that, that pressure, you know, but that's what I would say is the, the, uh, Ask for you know, ask God for guidance, what you're supposed to be doing, and then just pay attention because the signs are there. A lot of times we just don't, we're oblivious. Yeah, you know, it's like that story when he's like, when, when were you gonna send help, God? And he's like, you know, that's when people <laughs> were stuck on the roof. He's like, I sent a boat, I sent a, you know, I sent a helicopter, and you said no to all of them. Just yeah. let go. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm from New Orleans. <laughs> I know the story. <laughs> 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 All right, so we got to wrap up just because I got another call, but you guys are great. No, you're great. Both, both yes, inspiration. Thank yeah, you. man. Where, Jake, where can people follow you, man? Life Like Jake everywhere. Okay. Uh, everything's lifelikejake.com, IG, YouTube, TikTok, right. the works. I'll throw that yeah. in, the, uh, in the notes, man. Yeah, and we'll man. definitely be doing this again. Looking forward to it. we got to take a trip down there. Absolutely. Yeah, it, do, it doesn't suck, I promise. Yeah. I haven't we'll been down that we'll way too We'll get the juice out there. Yeah, if anything, if anything I'll, fly yeah. up, I'll fly up here. And fly, fly, flies, flies back. back you know? be awesome. Use the mushrooms. I'll be man. asking God, God for a lot of faith. You guys want to go on a real good trip? This is going to be a fun ride. And they, BK, they follow you. BK Undisputed. Yeah. Undisputed Nutrition Co. Right? Cool, man. And is, is the juice have its own website? Uh, Dragon Juice. Just look up Undisputed. Undisputed. It's under, everything's under Undisputed. Okay. I'll throw that up too on the notes, man. So, boys, thanks for being being with me. Everybody, thanks for tuning in. Make sure you share this, leave a review, and uh, spread the good word, man. These guys were dropping bombs today. Later, guys. Peace. All right.